So for the for the agenda this evening, hopefully we'll be done in about an hour um, or less, depends on the number of questions that we have. We're going to go through some introductions, overview, general competition rules and highlights, um, competition categories, and then we'll highlight the open competitions. We'll talk about the exhibition rules. We'll take a short break um, in case there are any questions up to that point, and then we'll get into the 2023 game rules, or I'm sorry, 2024 game rules for the season. So my name is Shannon Polonis. Trying to find my advance button there. Here we go. With us also is uh, Elmer Santos, the RoboFest director. Uh, Pam Sparks is down the hall. She'll be joining us very soon. We had to move places today, so we're in a, in a different place on campus. So um, we wanted to make sure everybody that was coming to campus was able to find us. Um, Stephen Criscala is our database web app developer, and Marilyn Wiseman is our department administrator. We have um, six student assistants this season. Uh, Stephen, Devson, Giovanni, Robert, Carly, and Nicholas. We're very ha happy to have them all. This year, we've also started something new with an executive council. Um, these are faculty members at Lawrence Tech that are here to help us make sure that we're meeting all of our goals and um, focusing on the educational aspect of RoboFest. Um, Dr. Chung is the advisory board chair and executive council member. I believe he's online with us right now too. Dr. Christopher Cartwright, um, former RoboFest director is on our executive council. And we have a new professor, Dr. Eric Martinson, a new associate professor who's working on math and computer science um, on AI. And he was an exhibition judge last season. And we're very happy to have them with us as well. We still have an advisory board and we do appreciate all of our uh, advisory board members um, around the world, around the country, and they help us with the assessment part, part of the program. Something else we've tried this year, uh, we've designed some technical committees. These groups have been working to redesign and define the game competition rules. Um, they created the game rules this year, and we've also been working on all the other open category rules to make sure that they're truly meeting our goals. Um, they will also be participating as judges in the world championship events, and if uh, necessary, the qualifying competitions. And there are short bios are available on each category page on our website, so please do check those out. Our main sponsors this year and last year are Michigan Council of Women in Tech. KLA, RoboMatter, IBM, IEEE, and NDIA Michigan chapter. Okay, getting into the RoboFest overview and schedule. RoboFest was founded in 1999 by CJ Chung, a computer um, science professor at Lawrence Tech University. We are a festival of competitions using autonomous robots, offering students the opportunity to master principles of STEAM while also having fun. Since its founding, we've served over 34,600 34, students, and that includes teams from 18 states and over 30 countries and regions. RoboFest is a trademark of Lawrence Technological University. Our mission is to generate excitement and interest among young people in STEAM, computer science, and AI. We hope to develop essential skills such as teamwork, leadership, and creativity, as well as communication and problem-solving skills. We hope to prepare students to excel in higher education and technological careers. Many features of RoboFest. First and foremost, it was developed and is currently managed by Lawrence Technological University. Um, it is a 100% autonomous robotics program requiring sensors, but any robot platform in any programming language can be used for most categories. We use small teams for the max amount, maximum amount of learning um, challenging and dynamic playing fields, unknown factors, and no adult help. We recognize all participants. We consider ourselves extremely affordable by the teams being able to use old kits. And then we try to make sure that our game field elements are off the shelf or easily um, manufactured by the teams. And we only have a $75 registration fee. There's a wide variety of categories for more opportunities in STEAM learning. And we definitely hold ourselves accountable through making sure that our participants are learning and enjoying themselves. And we um, read our every one of those volunteer and coach um, 
responses and react to them. We take them very, very seriously. We've had a LTU scholarship opportunity for RoboFest participants for many years um, for a $3,000 annual renewable scholarship for a total of $12,000. Um, students any who participate in RoboFest at any time during their school uh, eight school years can apply to a Lawrence Tech and then apply the $3,000 renewable scholarship application on top of that. Um, they do require a letter of recommendation as well as a uh, an essay regarding the RoboFest experience. Um, and the deadline for those submissions is April 1st for next year's uh, entrance. Last year, we introduced a new scholarship. We call it the RoboFest World Championship, World Champion Scholarship. It's a $17,000 annual RoboFest um, scholarship, $17,000 annual for a total of $68,000 over four years. And it's presented to the team members of all the first place senior games, senior exhibition, senior Robo Arts, Robo Med, UMC, and VCC teams. Students, there are some requirements. They must um, use the scholarship the same year that they graduate. They must meet LTU admission criteria and, and scholarship criteria. And then it's renewable provided that the student has a minimum number of credit hours and maintains a certain GPA. To go along with that competition um, scholarship, we also introduced this year, and we hope to do this um, again in the future, um, a UMC scholarship competition. This is an unknown mission challenge that's different than the one that's hosted at the World Championship for um, high school students. The first place person, these are individuals, receives a $17,000 scholarship to Lawrence Tech. Second place receives a $12,000 scholarship. We do have this competition this Saturday. Um, it is open to the public if you wanna come by. Um, it's in our RoboFest our robotics lab, um, J234 on campus. Um, so the individual students will be joining us and they'll be given a challenge and they'll have two hours to build and program their robot to solve the task. Um, it's a $25 registration fee and it is limited to certain, um, certain robots. Another exciting new thing this year is the RoboFest is part of the Michigan 99H grant fund. Um, we are part of the group of robotics competitions um, that Michigan has decided um, is worthy to receive funding um, for public school districts, intermediate school districts, and non-public schools. Um, the grants vary between $500 and $1,200, depending on the level of the team and the, um, if they're a rookie team or a veteran team, and coach stipends are also available. Um, the registration um, is open for teams that are interested in applying for the grant because the registration for the grant closes on December 31st at noon. So teams have to be registered with a team number in order to register and apply for the grant. So we have a pre-registration site open. If you're interested in knowing more about that, please let us know. Um, but also you can look at the Michigan website, Michigan Department of Education, and we will be hosting an introduction to RoboFest coaching workshop for new coaches um, with our partner at MISD. Um, we finally came to a conclusion on a date, um, December 12th at 4.30. Um, we're going to be offering strategies um, to help new coaches design a successful program um, so their teams can be um, to hopefully do well in, in the competition. Our, one of our sponsors also hosts uh, grants for RoboFest teams. Um, up to 10 all-girl RoboFest teams in the state of Michigan can apply for a $750 grant. The application is being is open. Um, they're renewed each month. So it's a rolling application. So if, as teams are applying, they'll be awarding these uh, grants. Um, and then as long as funds are available, they'll continue the awarding grants until the uh, 8th of March. And their website is also here. Um, we also have a grant um, page on our About tab. Um, I'm sorry, yes, About tab on um, uh, grants. Um, so all this information is available on our website as well. We are looking for site hosts um, in any location. Um, we rely on volunteer site hosts to host our qualifiers and some of our open category events throughout the season. Uh, it does provide great visibility for your organization. You can showcase your facility and staff. 
um, and there's lots of opportunities for STEAM outreach. They're very easy to manage. Um, it's about a four hour event and it, they're very easy to schedule as far as flexibility. You can do it on a Friday night, anytime during the weekend, morning or afternoon. Um, and we really would love to have more sites available this year for our students as we're starting to grow in Michigan. We wanna make sure that we get everybody who wants to host um, an application. We provide um, most of the information, most of the, the, the materials that you would need um, promotion, uh, preparation, the volunteer training, game materials, event support, and recognition materials. We ask that you provide a facility, um, some volunteers, and you can have an optional concession stand, and you can also um, help offset your costs by uh, collecting a check-in fee per team. We recommend about $20 per team, but we are also looking um, for others to help out too and volunteer. Um, here's our preseason schedule. Um, as you can see, we released our initial rules on September 30th. Uh, we opened our registration on October 1st. Um, some of our international groups have already started their competition season. And here we are on November 2nd with our kickoff two. On December 12th, as I mentioned, we're going to have a new coach workshop. On January 13th, we'll have our final kickoff meeting um, here at LTU and also on Zoom. We'll be in our regular space that day. Um, and then January through February, we have technical workshops for registered teams. And then February 10th, we are looking for a few teams that are ready to help us with a uh, game warm up. And uh, there we develop videos and work out a, the, the last final um, challenges to make sure that our judges are trained well. And then on February 17th, our US competitions will begin at qualifiers um, at local sites. April 14th is the end of qualifiers. Um, any video submission teams are, their submissions are due on April 15th. And then everyone is notified, any waitlisted teams or any video qualifier teams um, will be notified of advancement no later than April 18th. April 19th and 20th, we have our Michigan Invitational events. And then May 9th, 10th and 11th is our 25th World Championship here at LTU. As I mentioned, our technical workshops, we host on-campus workshops in our computer science robotics lab. They are free for registered game or exhibition teams. Um, students can come to multiple workshops if they're interested. Um, all of the workshop materials are also posted to our webpage um, called under workshops, e-academy e workshops. And then um, we also encourage coaches, especially new coaches to attend the technical workshops with their teams um, to learn the basics if they are just getting started. Um, please note that this schedule may change, but uh, the list um, and registration links are on the registration page and then search for available workshops on the left-hand menu. But here is the list of workshops currently scheduled. We have um, the three days, uh, two days in January and a day in February. We're hosting VEX Code uh, with VEX IQ, Lego EV3, um, Lego Spike Prime with Robot Inventor and with Scratch, and then uh, Lego Spike Prime Robot Inventor with Python. And then we're hosting a new intro to exhibition um, with Lego EV3 with Scratch. Uh, this is a, a way to help teams understand you know, how to start a, an exhibition project, where to find information and, and how to get started. So we're really excited to host uh, this year. It, it will include a lot of the basics um, that teams need, but it's also going to go into more depth about how, how to really start and how to decide on what exhibition project is good for your team. So there's our schedule, and um, I'm going to now discuss the highlights of our general competition rules. Please note that this is just a summary. Um, the official general rules are, are on our page, our website on the 2024 main page. Um, so please reference those rules, that document for the official rules, um, but I will highlight them here. So who can coach? We we love to announce that our coaches are, are adults with no criminal record, and they need to review and understand the general and category rules and communicate those rules with the team members. Um, we communicate mostly with the coaches through email, so they must have a valid and confirmed email address, and we encourage them to check it regularly. Um, they need to register teams, um, enter and verify information, and then pay the registration fee. 
They must coordinate the completion of the incent form, uh, which um, helps them helps us with our media release and authorization, and also as well as um, the authorization to participate in the uh, assessment. And this is something we're doing for the 2024. We're going to try to uh, collect a form for each event. We've had years where we've only done one per season and it's it's hard to maintain and manage compliance in that regard. So we're going to um, try to get one for each, each event. So it's, it's easy to complete online. Just send the email to the parents and uh, they can complete it online. And then we, know, we get notification that the form is completed. Um, as I mentioned, we do pre and post assessments. Um, to help RoboFest administer. Um, so your the coach's responsibility is to coordinate those assessments, send the email links uh, or the, the, the links to their team members. Um, and then we ask coaches to facilitate transport and oversee team members at meetings and at competitions. Coaches should ensure that students do the work and coaches agree and, okay. and abide by the coach pledge, which is in our general rules. I will not read it for you right now, but please um, note that we do um, hope that coaches abide by the pledge. So coaches are one thing now, how, who can be a team? We don't limit teams to schools. Any organization can be a, can form a team. They can be neighborhood children, uh, kids in, around the block, homeschool organization, um, or a club. Um, there are two different grade level divisions um, so, and they vary somewhat by category. Um, if you have students that want to play in a different division, if most of your team is one age and they, you have another student that wants to participate, you can submit an age division waiver request during the registration process. Uh, a team member can be on multiple teams, but not in the same category. So a person cannot participate on two separate game teams. They have to be on, they can be game and bottle sumo or et cetera, but they cannot participate on two competing teams that would compete against each other. Um, a team can also register at multiple qualifying sites if they would like a second chance to qualify to advance. Absolutely. Under team responsibilities, we expect students to do all the work. Coaches and mentors should only teach and guide the team to find their own solutions. Teams should observe all the general and category rules. Observe the check-in time set by the site host, bring all the materials they need on competition day, follow the pit rules, which means only team members and authorized adults are in the pit and do not communicate with coaches, parents, or mentors during the work time. We expect teams to respect other teams and spectators and maintain the spirit of RoboFest. We also have a team pledge that we uh, read at the beginning of each event and we expect the teams will abide by the team pledge for each event. For 2024, we have two types of categories of competitions. There's qualifier and there's open categories. Um, there's eight total categories. Um, there's different skill levels and experiences, uh, varied steam subjects, game style, uh, categories are have fixed rules and exhibition style are project based, meaning a, a science fair project. Some are specific to a certain genre of of of, of information. So the two qualifier categories are game and exhibition. This year's game is autonomous taxi. With this uh, describes the age divisions, the maximum team size. Any robot platform can be used and the unknown factors for game are completely are unveiled at the beginning of at the, at the competition. Some are unknown until the team arrives. Some are unknown until the team has completed their programming. It varies by division, um, but all of this information is available in the game rules. For exhibition, um, we have two age divisions, uh, maximum team size is five. And this is the project-based program. So lighting conditions that may impact robot sensors are unknown until the day of the, pro the, the competition. Teams must uh, compete in a, a qualifier in order to advance to the world championships on May 11th. 
Open categories, uh, teams from US or non-member countries may register in the open categories as long as space is available. They do not need to qualify. Um, some US states, some, some sites may also open, host open category competitions. Um, international member country delegates are selected by their director based on a quota um, that we work with each director um, depending on how if they host the event or not. There's a lot of that goes into that and we work with each director independently. So we have Bottle Sumo, there's a junior um, division and then Senior Classic and Senior Unlimited. Uh, senior Classic and Junior have limited uh, robot platforms. Senior Unlimited is any robot platform. The Unknown Mission Challenge has a limited platform as well. Um, there's two age divisions for the World Championship Unknown Mission Challenge event. Robo Arts, Robo Parade, which is an expanded junior division, Robo Med and Vision Centric Challenge. Visit VCC is back this year after a hiatus during the pandemic, and um, we are opening it just to senior teams. Um, the maximum team size for all of these open categories is five. Some international sites may have a different fee structure than what I'm displaying here. Um, it's a separate fee that's applied to each event. RoboFest collects this fee. Um, we try hard to make sure that teams continue their participate. So we, we say no refunds will be given. Um, sites may request an additional site check-in fee uh, to help offset their costs. It is listed on the event website um, when you go to register. Um, and then teams who advance to the RoboFest World Championship will be paying a separate registration fee. So that includes international teams. So if an international team has a different fee structure for their event, teams that advance will pay RoboFest for the World Championship um, by this schedule. So how do teams advance to the World Championship? There's three groups of teams that we're describing here, Michigan teams, U.S. teams outside Michigan and then international teams all have different ways to advance. So depending on the category and where the team is located, there are differences. Um, as I mentioned, all Michigan and U.S. teams may register for open category events. So this is how teams advance to the finals through game and exhibition qualifiers. For Michigan game teams, all first place award-winning game teams from each qualifying competition will advance. And then other game teams may be invited to the World Championship Finals based on their score. And we will notify teams of their advancement no later than the 15th of April. Teams may be notified immediately after their event or they may there may be a delay. It just depends on the scores and the number of teams that reach that score. So we will keep in touch with all the coaches, making sure that if they're close or if they're on the bubble, that they'll know, um, don't take apart your robot until you're, you're, you're certain that your team has not advanced after April 15th. Teams who would like a second chance to qualify, they know they're not gonna make a, the bubble or the wait list. Um, they wanna try again, they can register for any other local qualifier um, in Michigan, there are a number of local qualifiers in our area, so there, there's an opportunity to attend a second qualifier if there's time. Or they can submit a video qualifier, or they can attend one of the Michigan Invitational events um, we're hosting. Right now, there are three on the calendar, um, depending on the, um, the number of teams that want to participate in those. Um, we may lower the number to two, or we may increase if we need to. Um, but a team would need to register for any of these um, three options with a new team number and then pay a new registration fee. And then the total number of teams advancing from those events or from the uh, Michigan qualifiers will be decided by the team scores. Michigan exhibition teams, it's very similar, only there is no Michigan or Michigan Invitational for exhibition. So first place teams advance, other exhibition teams might be invited. Um, preview links must be uploaded to the team's registration page um, in order for us to evaluate if a team um, will be advancing from um, a qualifier if they didn't win first place. Um, and then teams will be notified no later than the 15th of April. 
Exhibition teams can also have a second chance to qualify. Um, they can do video submission, or if there is another local exhibition event in their area, they can um, they can register for one of those, but they would register for, with a new team number. And then the total number of teams advancing will be decided by all the scores. For US teams outside Michigan, um, we have first place award winning teams advance. Other game teams will be advanced, invited based on their score. Again, no later than April 15th. And then teams may apply for a second chance through video submission. Um, if there are local areas, I know Florida has um, sometimes has multiple locations, we do allow them to attend a second qualifier if there's a team uh, qualifier nearby. Um, but in most cases, um, outside of Michigan, there's only one qualifier. So, um, but teams can register through video qualifiers for a second chance to, to advance. Same exact thing with your exhibition. First place teams advance. Other exhibition teams will be invited based on their preview video and their score. And then exhibition teams can submit a video qualifier for a second chance to qualify for world championship. For international teams, um, we work with international directors and hosts. So the international game and exhibition teams um, and open category teams in member countries will compete at their local events. Um, our list of international directors is available on our website. Um, the qualified teams are advanced through the director. International game and exhibition teams in non-member countries may compete via video qualifiers, international submission due April 15th. And then international open category teams and non-member countries can register directly for open categories once those registrations are open. Here's a sample of the quota. Um, so for international teams hosting game and exhibition, there's a uh, one team advances for each uh, up to 49 teams. Um, so a maximum of two per country. Um, and then for open categories, depending on the number of teams they host, um, they can send more teams. If they don't host an open category uh, division at their local event, they can select teams, one team from the uh, other teams, the uh, game and exhibition teams to participate in an open category um, to represent their country. Um, there are some conditions and we definitely work with the individual directors um, to make sure that uh, we, we allow as many as we can, but we have to make sure that we maintain our limits. We have some space constraints. So that's why we um, have published the quota this year. Regarding video qualifier submission, um, there are two uh, sites. There's um, for game and exhibition. Um, so they're basically just like a regular qualifier as far as registration, but there are some rules regarding how teams submit their videos. Um, the game teams will receive a email on April 4th, sent to the coach with their unknown tasks and factors, along with some instructions on how to submit the video and how to how to manage the event um, as if they were in a competition with other teams. Um, the video submission deadline is Monday, April 15th. Um, we do allow adults to help produce the video and anyone who helps should be acknowledged in the video production in the credits. And then teams will upload that video to a video sharing site and then post the link on their team registration page. Okay, I'm gonna go through the competition category highlights. So these are all the open categories and a little bit more detail. Uh, the Bottle Sumo event is a fun one. It's very popular, second most popular to our game competition. The object of the event is to be the first robot to intentionally push the bottle off the table or be the last robot remaining on the table. We say table, we meaning like the playing fields. Most of our playing fields are a, a lifetime six foot table. Um, we have three divisions, as I mentioned, junior, senior classic, and senior unlimited. Maximum team size is three. For 2024, we have some new configurations and new unknown tasks. Um, and we have all of our rules posted on our website under robofest.net and scroll down and we have on our new page a bottle sumo a link right there on, on the home page so here's a, a new sample of our our playing field for bottle sumo we're adding a little bit of a 
challenge this year with the ramps. So the robot must be able to start anywhere on the ramp in any orientation. And the exact, exact ramp location will be unveiled prior to each match. And there's a video link here. When I upload this uh, presentation or in the RoboFest uh, Bottle Sumo rules, um, you can go and look at a sample match. So the junior division will be made of one table. Senior division is two tables. Um, and the configuration might look like this or it might be different. Um, so it's it's we're, we're trying to add a little more challenge this year and make it um, uh, something new for for this. It's been it's been the same for a long time. So we wanted to to shake things up a little bit. The unknown mission challenge um, we consider this like our our um, final exam computer programming um, missions are completely unknown until the day of the challenge. All the components must be unassembled. So basically, you start with a, a kit of parts. Um, two age divisions, a uh, maximum team size of three. Uh, we are limiting the kits to Lego Spike, Lego NXT, EV3, Spike Prime, and Vex IQ. Um, the senior division at the World Championship, the winning team is awarded their $17,000 World Champion Scholarship. And the rules to get started, um, some tips and tricks on how to practice, how to how to get ready, but not the mission is available on our RoboFest um, page under UMC. Back by popular demand is our vision centric challenge. Um, Eric, are you with us? Hello? Yes, I'm here. Okay, um, I'm going to let Eric, he's our, our technical committee chairperson for vision centric challenge. I have two slides here. So I'm gonna let Eric tell us about the vision centric challenge. And then when I get the next slide, that's where we get into the um, this year's challenge. So go ahead, okay. Eric. Okay, so VCC is back this year and uh, we've taken a little different uh, spin on it. We're, we're focusing on high school students uh, at that level. Uh, and it's gonna be a vision based measurement system. So instead of just self-driving, you know, which has been the the challenge for the last few years. This is going to be something with more industrial or manufacturing um, environment. I think we'll talk a little bit about that on the, the next slide. So it's going to be uh, just the senior division and then maximum team size of five. And the, the winning team is eligible for the $17,000 renewable scholarship. And then uh, rules are, are posted on the, the website. Okay, I'm going to go to the next slide. Yep. Okay, so basically what we're looking at is simulating a manufacturing environment where uh, you have to manufacture parts. And so the vision-centric challenge is going to be to use your camera and build a robot that then loads parts, inspects the parts, and determines if the dimensions on the parts are good or not. And so you can see how this could be very useful uh, for an environment where you have to do inspections. And normally inspections done using micrometers and calipers and CMMs, but we're taking a different spin on it, trying to use a camera to make very accurate measurements. Uh, so each team is gonna be given a blueprint and parts. Uh, they'll all be the identical part, but each part is manufactured a little bit differently. And what the objective of the game is to identify the dimensions that meet the requirements of the print. Uh, you're also provided with one of those dimensions is gonna be called the key product characteristics. So the one key dimension, and you have to record what that dimension is of that part. And the more accu accurate you are to making that measurement, the more points you'll score. Um, and basically the measurements gotta be done with a visual you could build a robot that touches the part and measures it, uh, but that wouldn't be allowed because obviously this is vision centric challenge. So uh, the teams are gonna learn a lot of uh, real world applications on, you know, what the dimensions on parts mean, how to look at a, a blueprint and how to do inspections. Thank you, Eric. You're welcome. I would like to correct, um, I'm gonna go back to UMC, there is an error on this slide. The maximum team size is four for Unknown Mission Challenge. My apologies, we'll make sure that this is updated in the next kickoff slide. 
um, before I upload it uh, to the website. Robo Arts is an exhibition style project specifically focused on the visual arts, which includes drawing and painting, kinetic arts, sculptures, performing arts, including dance, music, and skits. There are two age divisions. Maximum team number is five. Um, the senior division world championship winning team is awarded the scholarship of $17,000. And the rules are available on the RoboFest site under the Robo Arts page. RoboMed is also a, an exhibition style um, presentation project. Um, it's Focus is intelligent and interactive biomedical devices related to biomedical and healthcare fields. The robots must use sensors and or actuators. Um, we also feel that this promotes the entrepreneurial mindset. Um, so students are thinking about how to take this to market after their presentations. Uh, we, that's part of the, should be part of the presentation itself. Um, there are two age divisions and the maximum team size is five. The senior division team wins the award, are awarded the $17,000 scholarship certificate and the rules are available on our RoboMed page. Robo Parade uh, is a program for younger students beginning with fourth grades through eighth grade with no waiver needed. It's a perfect program for beginning robotics um, students. This year's world championship theme is on the farm. Um, local events may have their own theme, but for the world championship and for others, if they want to continue to use that, um, that theme throughout the season, um, that's fine. That's wonderful. Robots are designed to pull or carry decorative parade floats. Um, moving parts are allowed. Um, there's, like I mentioned, one division, team size five. Uh, the rules and rubrics have been modified this year. So please review those if you're interested in a Robo Parade on our Robo Parade page. I'm going to highlight the qualifier exhibition rules. Um, it is a qualifier category. As I mentioned, teams will compete in order to advance either at a local qualifier or through video. And then um, the team has complete freedom to create interactive robotic projects. They can be RoboMed, they can be RoboArts. Um, if they want to qualify with an exhibition project, it doesn't, this it is not limited to anything, but it's so it's wide open. Um, two age divisions, junior and senior, maximum team size is five. Uh, and then teams that advance and compete for senior division championship wins the $17,000 scholarship certificate. And the rules and judging rubric are on our website under exhibition. For exhibition, um, there are some limits and requirements. Um, we don't, uh, we, we do expect this, the students to provide a brief written description when they register. Um, the preview video is expected uh, uploaded to the RoboFest registration system. Um, and then we also require the source code. Um, they can submit a PDF of the source code and then we have inspectors um, if, if we have more technical folks judging fewer, you know, some, not everyone is always really great at judging the tech, the code. So we um, have recommendations by a code inspector who is very qualified to judge the code. Um, teams must bring all their materials to the presentation. Um, any material that is safe for humans can be used. Uh, we encourage robot to robot as well as human ro to robot interactions. Wireless program controlled robots are allowed. They must employ sensors. Uh, we do limit the demonstration space to 64 square feet. And then we also allow projects that may have been entered in a previous competition, um, but the team must add new features or significantly improve or change a feature or more, and then uh, explain that in their presentation. Are there any questions up until now, except for the one that we had regarding the UMC? Um, if you want to ra raise your hand, we'll get to you. Or if you just want to turn on your microphone, I don't know. Um, we're going to take a short break here, um, answer your questions, um, and then we're going to go to through the game rules. So if you want to just type something in chat or 
No questions? Everyone is happy with the presentation so far? Do you want to switch chairs? Yeah. Um, okay, do you want to take a quick break? We don't we don't need to take a break if everyone's good. We're just gonna keep going. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I have a question. Sure. Um, so the the scholarship award, is that uh amount for the entire team to split or is that a per student? Uh, per student. Per team? Okay, great. Um and then um can they start attending assuming they win, can they start attending? Um, prior to graduating high school. I'm sorry, um, I'm having a hard time. Can you get a little closer to your microphone? Yeah, can you hear me now? Is this better? Yes, yeah. Okay, um, so can students, or are students allowed to start attending, assuming they, they win the scholarship, um, prior to their senior year? Um, because uh, I think some students, uh, some schools, they start taking some um, you know, college classes over the summer. And sure, like a dual enrollment program? Right, yeah, are they, are they allowed to do yes. that prior to finishing high school? Yeah, we need to determine um, with the dean of the college uh, and the university to um, if that scholarship would apply to a dual enrollment program. Um, a lot of dual enrollment programs are covered by the district that the student is attending. So it, it's it we have to determine on an individual basis if it would apply. So definitely keep in touch. And if there's an interest and and uh, there's any way we can facilitate that, um, we'll definitely do what we can. Um, but uh, right now, I mean, we encourage dual enrollment, but this this scholarship is specifically for the four years of undergraduate. But I'm not I'm not going to say no to a student coming to Lawrence Tech and taking advantage of the incredible programs that we have here. So um, we'll we'll work with you individually if we need to. So that's a very All good right, question, though. I'll, I'll address that with our with our. Um, administration and and make sure that we can clearly identify what that does look like going forward. Okay, Elmer's going to start. Are there any other questions? Okay. All right. Um, online workshops. Let me check the chat. Um, okay, we will, when we host the new uh, coach workshop in December, um, Jenny Lou, we will definitely record um, the presentation. We might not record it live, but we will take that presentation and produce a recording of that presentation for um, coaches to be able to review. Um, if there is something more that you would like help with, um, we'd be happy to work with you individually to get you going. Um, and we've also talked with other um, out-of-state uh, coaches and hosts to maybe even um, work on like a, a one-off um, technical workshop for the students. It might not be the same time as the workshops that we host here. Um, it's hard for us to do online versus online and in-person workshops. It just, it doesn't, it's it's not a real conducive way to to get the students together. So we, we can work with you, um, whatever you need, we'll make sure that we can uh, help you out there, so. I, I look forward to working with you, Jenny Lou. <laughs> I was so excited when I got your email. Okay, um, are there any other questions? I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and then Elmer is going to uh, load up the video for the game. This is a, a demonstration of the, the RoboFest 2024 game called Autonomous Taxi.
One second. Okay, I'm happy to present the uh, 2024 game, Autonomous Taxi. For those who cannot or choose not to drive, self-driving vehicles could be safe and reliable transportation. Those with a disability or the elderly would be able to travel without putting others at risk. Self-driving vehicles could reduce the stress of driving, eliminate driver distraction, lower the number of accidents, and make traveling more sustainable. Imagine a world where an autonomous taxi can take people to where they want to go or to deliver their food. In addition, imagine if the autonomous vehicle can help an elderly or disabled person get to the second floor of a building. So here is the um, game uh, synopsis. The autonomous vehicle has to take three passengers and a food delivery to the desired destination while obeying traffic laws and avoiding collisions. Um, it's a two minute round, one reset allowed. All tasks must be done autonomously and that there will be some unknown task and factors. Specifically the um, passenger destinations, uh, the game ending task, and then also some items may be added for the uh, game ending task. For the junior division, passenger one starts here, um, has to go to building C, second floor, and I'll explain second floor uh, uh, soon. Um, passengers two and three, they could go to any of these buildings and that those destinations will be uh, unveiled before the work time. Passenger four, which is the orange one, has to go to building B. It's a and the uh, robot must avoid pedestrians which are located in the screen median. Also, um, when the robot goes through the um, this black line, it has to stop for at least a second, one second, um, or it will get a penalty. And there was a question on that last time. Basically, what we're saying is if the robot completely goes through the line, it must stop. Um, there might be occasions where it hovers over the line and then turns around or changes direction and that, that, that doesn't necessitate a stop, but uh, passing all the way through is what we're talking about. Um, the field has a barcode and the barcode may be used for the end task. Uh, the code will be unveiled after impound. Um, and some examples, um, Display the color of bit two at the end of the round. Another example, possibly stop in goal in front of goal A. If bit one is black, stop in goal B. If bit one is white. Uh, there may, may be other examples. You know, some may use uh, some or part of or some or all of the bits of the barcode. It, it's just one of the unknowns. Senior division. Uh, similar. Um, biggest difference is. Uh, the destination of passenger three that is not unveiled. It's um, before work time, but it's unveiled via the barcode. So that's the, the main, main difference for senior division, a bit of an unknown. Um, sim similar as to junior, junior division, the barcode may also be used for um, the end task. Um, since it's senior division would be a little more complicated for example, you may be asked to display the colors of all three bits or display some sort of um, uh, answer to an equation. In this case, that they say, um, assuming white is zero, black is one, uh, display the sum of the three bits. Mm -hmm. um, some more detail on the destination barcode that's gonna be um, determined via the, this chart. So basically the, the combination and the destination. So for this example, it's white, black, white. So white, black, white, destination, building A. Uh, once again, we've got uh, two divisions, junior and senior, maximum team size is five, and the senior Division 
teams um, have the opportunity to win a $17,000 renewable LTU scholarship. Uh, one thing that we uh, did this year is um, most of the field dimensions are fixed. The one thing that changes uh, is going to be the location of the start mark and the barcode, and that's going to be within this range. Differences between junior and senior. Um, as I mentioned, the, the game ending task will be harder for senior. Um, the destination of passenger two is the same for both unveiled before work time. However, for passenger three, for senior division, it's unveiled after work time. Uh, senior divisions allowed multiple onboard controllers and vision sensor. Um, here's the material list. Um, these are all hopefully common uh, items which can be uh, easily obtained. Some detail on the buildings. I, I mentioned the second floor, basically that's created by putting a divider um, in the building box. So basically to get to the second floor of building C, the ball has to be um, introduced from the top of the building. Whereas um, the other style building, it can go through the top or through the slot. Uh, just a note on the building flap, it's designed to help the ball go in and there, there's a little ridge to keep the ball from coming uh, out. And there's some instructions on how to uh, assemble that in the rules. You have more detail on um, the building two, or I'm sorry, building C, second floor. Uh, passenger and food objects. Um, Whole reinforcement stickers will be used to mark the locations. Um, the white balls will have uh, labels on them to help differentiate uh, and uh, do the judging. There's a green median and that's basically made by um, an eight and a half by 11 green piece of paper cut in half and then it's taped on either side of the black line. And then uh, note there are also some 10 centimeter zones and that those are zones which um, the battery may randomly be uh, located. Uh, robot specifications, um, similar to previous years, robots must be created by students. And we're trying to avoid identical robots. Robots can be similar, but they need to be, the, uh, the team needs to know how they work, be able to um, yeah, uh, no, describe how they function or are supposed to function. Uh, any robot kit may be uh, used. A uh, maximum length and width, 35 by 35 centimeters, no height or weight limitation, um, no sensor um, limitation unless harmful to humans. Um, multiplexers are allowed. Uh, just to note that the wheels for uh, driving must touch the surface during inspection. Uh, the, we need to have labels to help identify the uh, teams. And um, very important this year, a display screen um, isn't required for the game ending task. Uh, similar to previous years, the violations, um, if they occur, the, the, the gameplay may, uh, will, will be stopped. That is if someone touches the robot, if the robot falls on the table or any other activities uh, that the judge determines. And at that point, the team can request a one-time um, full reset with penalty, or they can declare the end of the round. Yeah, similar uh, to previous years, only contestants are allowed into the area. Um, hard copies will be provided for uh, UTFs. Um, and uh, there'll be a 30 minute work time um, to uh, make adjustments for the unknown tasking factors. And uh, as always, teams uh, must share the fields. Uh, there'll be an impound process uh, after the 30 minutes. Um, no powers uh, allowed during uh, in the impound area. Um, teams will compete in a predetermined order. And then uh, during the game rounds, all team members must remain uh, in the uh, spectator uh, area. Okay, these are pretty much similar to um, previous years. I, I won't go through that. Uh, 
this is the scorecard. Yeah, it's kind of hard to read, but um, hopefully it's uh, self-explanatory. Um, here's, the, yeah, next I'm gonna go through some examples of unknown tests and factors. For junior division, basically we're gonna unveil the destinations. Um, passenger one always goes to uh, destination C, but it's just um, repeated here to just for completeness. Um, in this case, uh, yeah, uh, passenger two goes to building A and uh, passenger three goes to building B. Oh yeah, one thing to note, the exact location of the start is unveiled uh, after impound um, for this year. And then uh, just an example of a game ending task, a robot must be stopped with a sensor positioned over the south edge of the field and display the status of uh, bit one. Senior uh, would be a little more challenging. Um, yeah, so in this example, it says the, well, uh, yeah, let me back up. Uh, uh, as I mentioned, destination for passenger three um, is not unveiled. It's basically, they have to decipher the, the barcode and the game ending task in this case, in this example, the robot must be stopped with a sensor positioned over the south edge of the field and display the distance from bit one to the east edge of the table. Yeah, new this year, we're gonna try a new way to rank teams. We're gonna be using um, a method called best plus average uh, divided by two. So basically what we're gonna do, it basically, to do well, you basically have to have a high score and a consistent score. Yeah, so uh, I'm not gonna go through all uh, all the detail here, but uh, please review it. Um, we feel that uh, this method will reduce the ties, but if there are ties, uh, the tiebreakers will be the best score of the two rounds. Uh, second tiebreakers, um, time left over if it's a 100 point round and reruns if uh, necessary. Yeah, so that's basically the uh, the game. Uh, there's some FAQs. Uh, we will be doing some updates um, in the next couple of weeks based on uh, input that we received from the first um, rollout kickoff and from the, the, that we received from this one. Um, I would like to thank our uh, game committee members. You can see them here. Um, so I'd like to thank them for their um, their help with the rules. So that's our game. Um, wish everyone luck. Are there any questions? I have a question. Can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Yes. Uh, so uh, I think a earlier chart said that for the junior division for the game, um, it was limited to the Lego of X parts. Uh, are you allowed to 3D print some parts as well? Oh, yeah. No, no. The, the, um, yes. Yeah, yeah, you're allowed to 3D print. Uh, there aren't any limitations to platform. Um, the only limit, the, the only categories would have which have those kind of limitations are bottle sumo and uh, unknown mission challenge. Yeah, so oh. game is totally open. Oh, okay, great. And uh, I think there was a chart that said that only the senior division allowed to use uh, vision uh, systems. Does that include like um, ranging um, sensors like, like LIDAR? Because the VEX kit has a, a LIDAR. I would yeah, say. no, no, that, that, uh, that's okay. No, what we're talking about vision, we just mean the camera base. Camera, okay. Yeah. yeah, so any standard sensors for, uh, from the, the um, yeah, LEGO kits are, are okay. Yeah, the, the only thing prohibited are the, the cameras. Next, the Vex IQ system does have a camera. Yeah, yeah. So that would be prohibited for um okay. for junior division. Yeah. Okay, is there anything in chat? Yeah, we have a question in chat regarding the coach. Um, can a returning coach who has not participated in a while still attend the new coach online or new, new coach workshop? Um, as I mentioned, it will be um in person in Michigan, as well as a, something that we upload as far as a, a video format. 
And if we get a, a lot of interest, um, we will definitely host um, a new coach online workshop for anybody that, that wants to participate. Um, and then the optical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The optical sensor is allowed. Yeah, as I said, it's really just division um, sensors that, that we're restricting from junior division uh, only. And if there are any specific um, questions, you can send them. Um, send them to, to me or to, to the RoboFest email and we'll um we can address the, those as they as they come up. I have one more question the workshop um in February, January, February. Uh, so that is um the next one is the next time. Uh, will you be teaching or um demonstrating using the the um, blocks, the Vex code blocks, or um, Python. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I can't quite hear that, but I, I I believe the question was around programming language. It's open to any any programming language, um, blocks okay. or text. Yeah, this was your um, workshop for the Vex IQ uh, using Vex code. Um, yeah. In January, February timeframe, uh, were you guys planning to do the workshop using the blocks? Or or the uh, Python. Yeah, most of them are going to be blocks. Um, we are offering um, a, a, let me think. The, the, I'm sorry, the, the text one's going to be Python. Yeah, was that part of? Would that be taught as part of the Vex IQ Vex code? Um, or was the Python only for the? Um, yeah, I, I think that was for the um, bodies, the spike. Um, yes, yeah, for the spike. But again, if you have any specific questions with um, other languages, uh, we can try to help. Here, any other questions you see, Shannon? Regarding the new coach oh. um, workshop, it's it's not a requirement. It's we're offering it um, as a as a helpful workshop for new coaches to get started. We will be uploading the presentation to our website after December twelfth. Um, again, it's not a requirement, so we'll do what we can to help new coaches as much as we can. Um, but it's it's something that we're just we're we're trying something new this year. Okay, hey, I, I I don't see. Any... No, no, I don't see any more either. So we're going to. I think we have covered everything. Um, we're going to start the. Oh, oh there's a question about the website. Oh, our Robofest.net. <laughs> yeah, that's our website. That's our website. <laughs> Well, thank you everyone for coming today. Um, we hope to see you all around during uh, the qualifying season. Please reach out. Um, uh, we will be posting this presentation and a recording of this presentation to our webpage tomorrow. Um, so um, we can uh, we can definitely, uh, I mean, we could go through the recap now, or we can uh, hopefully, I think the recording of it will be um, helpful. So um, I think it, it's about eight o'clock. Our, our pre plan was to be done in about an hour. Um, if you wanted to stick around for a little while, we can go through and help you out um, individually. Um, so if there are any other questions uh, after we hang up today, then definitely reach out to us at robofest at ltu.edu. Let me type that in. Um, this is our email address. Please reach out to us. Um, we'll we'll get uh, we'll help hopefully answer your questions um, within a day or two. Um, so 
I hope to see you all. Um, we're gonna we're gonna replay the 2023 video um, as people log off, and then once uh, if there's anybody still after the video, um, we will um, we'll stick around for a few more minutes. And if you have anything that you want to uh, ask personally, we'll we'll be around. So Elmer's gonna start the video. I'm gonna stop the presentation. I hope you enjoyed the presentation.